2022. Since that time, there has been an ongoing intensive investigation involving multiple agencies and multiple persons within those agencies. I want to specifically point out here with us today um, the Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Rick Fuller, Lieutenant Jim Sandlin, and Detective Meisner. From the Portage Department of Public Safety, Chief Director of Public Safety, Nicholas Armold, Lieutenant Ron Clark, and Detective Jim Lord are with us. This investigation has involved not only our local authorities, but federal authorities as well. The Federal Bureau of Investigation has been actively involved in this, from the FBI, Peter Ellis, the resident agent in charge, and special agent Jeff Buttery are here. Not with us, but certainly I need to thank uh, for their involvement in this investigation as well is the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Michigan. Um, U.S. Attorney Mark Totten and his staff have been instrumental in moving this investigation forward. Last and certainly not least, from my office, from the Kalamazoo County Prosecutor's Office, has been Senior Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Chelsea Huber, who is with us and has been involved in this case since its onset working with and providing advice and assistance uh, to all of these investigators. As I said, as you know, Heather Kelly was last seen December 11, 2022. We have reached a point in this investigation where we are going to take the next step. That means criminal charges. We have this morning charged Carlos Vance Watts Jr. with the offense of murder for causing the death of Heather Kelly. That charge of open murder carries with it the possibility of a sentence of life without parole if convicted of first degree murder. If convicted of second degree murder, the consequence could be up to life in prison with the possibility of parole or any number of years. Mr. Watts currently is in federal custody. He has been in federal custody since the time of this murder. He is scheduled for sentencing by the federal authorities this Friday, January 12th. These charges will allow for an orderly transfer from federal custody to state custody of Mr. Watts after that sentencing occurs. He will remain in federal custody until that time, until the federal authorities have completed that hearing. I anticipate that state authorities will be available and they have already worked with the federal marshals to make sure that there is an orderly transfer of Mr. Watts to our custody so that he can face charges. The next step in that process will be an arraignment in front of an 8th District Court judge after he is transferred to state custody. That arraignment has not yet been scheduled because he's still with the feds. At that arraignment, he'll be informed of his charges. An attorney will be appointed if he has not hired one to represent him. Bond will be set in his case and then Further court proceedings will be scheduled by the 8th District Court, starting with a probable cause conference for approximate, at approximately one week after his arraignment, and then a preliminary hearing, which will initially be scheduled within 14 days of his arraignment, but is likely to be adjourned to give everyone an opportunity to properly prepare for that hearing. I'm certain that you will have lots of questions about the case. I want to inform you that I will not be discussing any of the evidence in the case. I'm specifically prohibited ethically from doing that. Um, I will tell you this with regard to the evidence. Heather Kelly's remains have not been recovered. We are moving forward with the charges in spite of that. This is an ongoing investigation. 
There's been thousands of hours spent by the Sheriff's Department, the Porter's Department of Public Safety, our federal counterparts already in this investigation. And we anticipate that there will be thousands more between now and a trial on these charges. In the meantime, I would remind everyone, if you have any information regarding this case, please contact the authorities. Specifically, you can contact Silent Observer at any time. There remains a reward that is outstanding for information leading to uh, the recovery of Heather's remains. Prior to us discussing this here publicly, I met with the victim's family this morning to inform them that we were moving forward with charges. They asked me to express their gratitude on behalf of and their thanks to all of the investigators that have been involved in this case. They've specifically asked that the media respect their privacy moving forward in this case. Um, they know that we have a lot more work to do and they're prepared to help us in any way that they can with this, including not discussing the case publicly. I would remind everybody that charges, in this case specifically the charge of murder, is merely an accusation. The defendant remains innocent until his guilt is proven in a court of law. With that, I'd ask if you have any questions and again caution you that I can't discuss this evidence in any sort of specific way. Go ahead. I'll shoot for a question. If you can't answer it, you're not hurting my feelings. Um, is Sprinkle Road still a location of interest, or do you have other locations that are being searched right now? The police have searched multiple locations during the course of this investigation, um, including that area as well as other areas. As I said, we have not recovered Heather's remains, so everything remains open in terms of where our investigation may take us uh, in that area. If applicable, what additional areas have been searched uh, that, that your office has been informed of where her remains could be found if not already of those existing areas? I'm not gonna go into any details about the investigation that haven't already been made public. Um, as I said, there'll be a preliminary examination scheduled in this case. The preliminary examination is a hearing where the prosecutor's office has to show the judge, the court, that we have sufficient information for this case to move forward, specifically that uh, if evidence from which the court can, can conclude that there is probable cause to believe that a murder was committed and that Mr. Watts is guilty of that crime. If you can, what was the turning point in your investigation where we, that you decided, your office decided to go with murder charges for Mr. Watts? It's accumulation of information that's been collected during the course of this investigation. As I said, uh, Senior Assistant Prosecutor Chelsea Huber has been involved directly with the investigators in this case, has kept me um, advised of developments in the case. I can't point to something and say with specificity what that thing is um, that has caused us to move forward, but we would not be moving forward unless we thought we had sufficient evidence to prove Mr. Watts' guilt beyond a reasonable doubt in court. There wasn't a, so it wasn't a single piece, it was multiple, what you say? It's, it's, the, it's the evidence in total in this case. The police are continuing to investigate this case. They will continue to investigate this case. As I said, if this is an ongoing investigation, I would encourage anyone with information that they think is relevant to please contact the authorities, whether that's the Sheriff's Department, the Porter's Department of Public Safety, or through Silent Observer. Um, we would welcome all information and the police will follow up on that. And then this is not Carlos's first run-in with law enforcement. It is not. 
Mr. Watts does have previous convictions at the time of this case. He was on supervised release. He has been being held on escape charges in the federal court system. That is what he's scheduled for sentencing for on Friday. And was there any motive or you cannot share that? Can't share that. I know at one point um, it was believed other people were involved in the killing and the cover-up. Is that still the case? I can't go into any specifics about what knowledge we have about other persons who may have been involved in either the commission or after the fact uh, with this case. As I've said, I think that additional information will become available as we move forward with the case specifically. At the time of the preliminary examination, I think that you all will learn a lot more about what information we have um, pointing to Mr. Watts's guilt. That looks like it's about everything at this point in time. Again, I'd ask that the media please respect the privacy of Heather's family. Obviously, this is big news for them. Um, and uh, they, they, their privacy is important in this, and, and I hope that you all can recognize that. Thank you very much for your time here today, um, and without any other questions, we'll conclude.